If you're living in a country where the government is practicing censorship and trying to ban you from using Starlink, I'm going to show you ways that you can not get caught using Starlink. My name is Neil Mavis. I'm a certified wireless network engineer and there are less than 650 people on the planet that have the CWNE designation as a wireless network expert and I'm number 311. You can check my credentials in the description. I've done Wi-Fi projects for hospitals, a military base, manufacturing centers, and I can definitely design, build, and troubleshoot bulletproof Wi-Fi systems. And as a result of that, I also know how it is very difficult to find Wi-Fi rogue devices. And I'm going to show you how to do that with your Starlink system. In this video, I'm going to take you to two different environments. An urban environment, which is New York City, and a very rural environment in Oklahoma to show you the different types of Wi-Fi environments and how your Wi-Fi Starlink access point could be easily found in either one. Finally, based on knowing how to find these devices, I'm going to show you how you can minimize getting your device found. This is how fast I could find a rogue Wi-Fi access point, such as a Starlink access point, in a large urban area. Here, this is uh, New York City and Manhattan and Brooklyn. And in 37 minutes, I drove from the Staten Island Ferry Terminal over the Brooklyn Bridge, down through Brooklyn Heights, and even further down to Cobble Hill and back, and went down this street here. This street here is Clark Street. And so you, as I zoom in, you can see I'm picking on one of these access points. Uh, this one has a really large footprint, and so I could measure how far away I am from this one. So this access point has really good coverage of about 87 meters. So about 250 feet from this access point, I should easily be able to pick it up. And then if I zoom in even further, I can see that it is on channel 36. So let's see if we can go and click on it and see if we can find even more information about it. It's down here. And notice that during the survey, I picked up 7,665 access points in 37 minutes. And I'm able to very quickly zoom in on this particular one of interest. And that access point is telling me it's broadcasting that it is at St. George Residence. It's a ruckus wireless access point, which means it's a really good access point. And let's see if there's any more information we can get out of it. That just tells me where it's located. But we can go to another view and see if we can get some more information. So when we go into this view, I can actually see some information around this area. So in the, uh, here I can see the uh, access points that are in the area. This is likely the one that we're trying to find because it's got very high power level. So we'll go over here and see if we can filter for it. So there it is. There's the ruckus access point. And it looks like uh, that is broadcasting that it is a free Wi-Fi from the link New York City. It's 802.11ac. It's capable of 1.7 gig. It's on channel 52 and 80. But because here I'm able to get within uh, 80 meters or 250 feet of it, I should be able to track this thing down. So remember this survey of all of this area in Brooklyn and uh, lower Manhattan took 37 minutes. And then I could just zoom in here. I'm within 250 feet of it. I could circle around and quickly find that access point, which means I could probably find a Starlink access point in an urban environment just as quickly. This is a Wi-Fi survey of a actual Starlink uh, unit in a very rural area of Oklahoma. And you can see up here they, there's a freeway and this access point for Starlink is located about 117 meters or about 350 feet off of the freeway. And so we're able to pick it up just a little bit. And if I were to hover out here in the parking lot, I'm still going to get a signal. It shows that you can see that it's picking up a Starlink base station at minus 75 dBm and minus 79 dBm. It's a bit weak, but I could still detect it. And if I were to want to try to triangulate it, I could drive down this road here and uh, would be able to get a signal strength measurement there of about minus 87. It's very weak. That would be crummy Wi-Fi for you and me, but we're able to pick it up 
And then if we look at the coverage, which is Starlink has amazing coverage. It's a very good access point. You can see that uh, I would have streaming video quality here uh, 41 meters away or about 120 feet. So Starlink was designed to give great Wi-Fi. But the sad thing is, is if you're in a country that's trying to impose censorship, this is how they could actually find the Wi-Fi device and find it rather quickly using these tools. So if we zoom in, we can see this is the, a campground and this is the bathhouse. We can see that uh, what's interesting about um, Starlink is if we measure right here the signal strength, it's got very good signal strength. And what it does is it uses this side of the band, the lower Uni 1 band, channels 36 to 52. That's the SSID that you would use to get on and use your services on 5 gigahertz on this. Uh, the Starlink Wi-Fi router is capable of having a repeater or a mesh network in this channel here from channel 149 to 161 would be used for the mesh network. And then you've got the 2.4 gigahertz band down here that you can see is pretty busy from another access point. But this is the Starlink channel and you can see it's kind of busy. But uh, it's a very good access point. And if we hover over in this uh, area on that particular access point, notice that it says it has four streams. That means it's a very good access point. It's like a, a freeway. You go from a one lane freeway to a two to a four lane freeway. The Starlink uh, unit is a very good access point. However, it means it could easily be found if you don't take precautions. And I'll explain how you can do that in the rest of this video. So even though my Starlink is misaligned, I can still go in here to settings. I want to go down here to settings. Under settings, under Starlink, under Starlink, I want snowmelt to be turned off because that puts heat on the antenna outside and a drone with an infrared camera could find it and you don't want to get found. You don't want to get caught. So we're going to leave that off. Then down here under router, I, want, I put up the SSAD of not get caught. We're going to tap that. And notice that right now it says split the 2.4 and 5 gig because both the networks up here, if we look, this right here on 2.4 gigahertz or on 2.4 gigahertz, this is the not get caught SSID. At Fulton House is my next door neighbor. And so under not get caught, we're going to see this pop up where it's going to say, it's got four streams. That's a really good router. And so if we go down here to five gigahertz, you're going to see not get caught is also broadcast. So over here, this is not get caught over here. This is the one that your end user devices uses. And then if you get a mesh network, it's going to use the other not get caught right here, which is this one. So the SSIDs are the same and your end user device doesn't know which one is which. It's going to go to the stronger signal, which sometimes can be the, the 2.4 gigahertz. So what we want to do is we want to separate the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz down here by tapping this. And I'm going to give it a new name. I'm going to just name it not get caught slow. So not yeah, so. And you can see it's now broadcasting not get caught slow. Here's the two settings I recommend that Starlink uh, add to a software upgrade in order to allow somebody to get away with using Starlink without getting caught. Down here under settings, we want to go up here to the network. I named it not get caught. And I've got it split as a 2.4 and 5 gigahertz network. I'd like them to add an option to turn off the 2.4 gigahertz network because it typically can go twice as far as 5 gigahertz. And with the 4x4 MIMO antennas inside the Starlink router, uh, they can be picked up pretty far. And that's not what people are wanting to have happen in these politically unstable countries. And then under the 5 gigahertz, there's nowhere on here to adjust the power level. And right now, as I've demonstrated, the 5 gigahertz network has amazing coverage. Over 150 feet uh, from the router, you can get streaming video and you can detect it over 300 feet away or 100 meters. If we could get the 5 gigahertz down to just enough power 
where you're within the same room, such as uh, uh, five meters at most, you could still get a minimum of five meg upload for video or even more. That way, you would have a very low power level, very hard to detect. But for people that are in the same room as the Starlink router, they'd have plenty of power to have an upload that matches the satellite link. So those are the two things. Turn off 2.4 gigahertz and allow a 5 gigahertz power setting for just enough to get the video up and uh, to the satellite link. And that way they can get on the network, do their upload, do their download, and then get off the network and shut down Starlink so they can't get caught. Here I've got the Starlink covered up by a towel so that I can hide it from infrared uh, drones. And so here's another thing that I'm going to do is I've got the cable coming into the house and the Starlink router, Wi-Fi router, is here in the middle of the house. Now notice that I've got a candle here, and I want to explain, if it's three in the morning and the power goes out in your house and there's no moon, and you've got one candle, where are you gonna put that candle? Well, the worst place to put it is here on the floor because it's gonna cast shadows everywhere. And typically that's the worst place to put a Wi-Fi access point because it's the only Wi-Fi candle that's illuminating your house with Wi-Fi energy or Wi-Fi light. So if you're trying to use Starlink without getting caught, it's to your advantage to put the router on the floor. However, in a typical situation, simply moving the Starlink router up above the furniture or this wall is going to dramatically increase. You'll get about 3 dB of extra gain just by getting the Starlink thing off the floor. It's the same thing as if I move this candle off the floor and move it up here, I am going to get much better light throughout the room. So if you're trying to use Starlink without getting caught, you're better off putting it on the floor. And in my case, I'm actually gonna to try to put it down in the basement. To not get caught using your Starlink, you wanna maximize the number of walls between your Starlink device and the road, the closest road where they'll probably be detecting it. So here, I've got a front door, uh, one wall right here, and then a second wall. But I, could, I don't have any other walls to put between myself and the front door, and then I've got over there the back wall. So the best thing to do is to take this Starlink router and actually put it in the basement, because the basement um, will have a high amount of a loss. One place that you could hide your Starlink when you're using it is actually inside of a filing cabinet. Here, it's a metal box, and here I've got the Starlink. I could open this up and then be sending my files when I only need to be sending and receiving them, and then I could close this up. And that way I'm minimizing the amount of RF power that's getting out the window to the front street. So anybody driving by, they're not gonna get very much power cut leaking out of this metal cabinet. To not get caught using Starlink Wi-Fi, the best place to put it is actually the worst place a, a Wi-Fi access point would normally be put, which is the lowest point in the house with the most amount of walls to attenuate the signal. Here it's on the floor in the basement behind that wall, and behind all that junk is a concrete wall and a wall of dirt. So I'm not gonna get hardly any signal from this access point to the street for it to be detected. I've got two walls over here to the left, two walls over here to the right, and then behind me is the outside wall and the utility room. So I've got a couple of walls out here, and in addition to that, I'm 100 meters or 300 feet from the nearest street. So this area is going to have the highest amount of attenuation, and it's the best place for me to get away with using Starlink without getting caught. I've draped a towel over the Starlink antenna to try to hide the heat signature, and it looks like it's still there. But what it really is, is you can actually see the towel is in this infrared image. You can see the towel, and to the right, you can see the tiny little piece right here, right there, that is not covered up by the towel. And that is what's giving this thing away. So you're gonna need a pretty big towel but if you, and you can even see a little bit of the heat is coming through the towel, but it's not as obvious as if the towel is removed. So here, I just removed the towel and that shape would be obvious to a drone to detect that this has got a, uh, a Starlink system in it. So you definitely want to cover up the outside antenna, 
even with the heater off. Right now I've got the snow heater off and you can still see that it's pretty visible. The ground temperature here is about 32 degrees, 33 degrees Fahrenheit, but I've got the snow melt turned on on the Starlink antenna. Notice now it's 65 degrees. When it was off a few minutes ago, it was about 45 degrees. So turning on the snow melt may be great for snow melt, but if you're in an area where you don't want your Starlink to get detected, a drone with a infrared sensor would be able to pick up this shape really easy. So what uh, you're gonna wanna do is drape a towel over the entire antenna like this. And with that, notice how the heat, it takes a second for the, there we go. So now notice how with the heat uh, sensor, how it's changed the look of this. So you definitely wanna put a towel and you wanna have some air, an air gap around it so that air can get in there. And notice that even with the towel on top of this, the heat is starting to show up along the edge of the towel where the towel is contacting the antenna. So you're going to want to get something to completely overdrape the antenna so the towel is not contacting the antenna and you get airflow under the antenna. And notice how just contact of the blanket or towel with the antenna basically negates the effect of hiding it from a drone. This is the FCC report where they tested the Starlink router or gateway. And you can see down here, this is the high efficiency 20 megahertz wide beam forming. And this is the 40 megahertz wide beam forming. And you can see that it's really impressive. They're right up there against the power limit of 30 dBm. Uh, right here on channel 11, they're right up there at it at 29.49. <laughs> Just a tad below rounding up to 30. So the Starlink router is really amazing. It really does have the 4x4 MIMO. You can see chain 0, 1, 2, and 3 here. I dedicate this video to the people in Iran who are marching for freedom and are currently being censored. I lived in Iran and I found the people to be very warm and inviting. In 1967, my dad was an Air Force officer stationed at the Baghdad Embassy and he came home and told my mom, you've got one hour to get one suitcase and the kids to the embassy to ride a bus to evacuate because of the Six Day War. I woke up the next morning with my family in Tehran and lived there for four months and went there uh, to kindergarten. And I remember one day I forgot to take my lunch and the Iranian kids there were very friendly. They shared their food. They had fabulous shish kebab and rice and I found that the Iranian people were amazing. And I wish them the best in this a protest and I hope that they get their freedom and I hope the content of this video helps them keep their Starlink system from getting caught. Good luck.